Okay guys, so now we're going to decode an ancient coin. Now I'm not sure where this coin is from, but just looking at the symbolism and the numbers within the coin, uh, it's definitely connected to the ancient Egyptian knowledge and it is old and definitely authentic. And so we see that we have a depiction of Jesus Christ on the cross on the front of the coin and the serpent on the cross on the back of the coin. So let's have a look at the front of the coin. So not only do we see Jesus Christ on the cross on the front of the coin, we also see Mary Magdalene. Now she is on the right and they have tried to hide her, but she is definitely there. And we can even see on the back of the coin, we now see the woman is actually reclined back and still on the right hand side. Because on the right hand side, we have the female Isis, the moon, and on the left hand side, we have the male Horus and the sun. So we can see that Mary Magdalene is definitely here on the right hand side. Now we also know that Mary Magdalene was in the scripture as being the only one with Jesus at his crucifixion. So even though they have tried to hide the truth from us, we can still find very valuable pieces of information in the Bible and we can even see it in their symbolism because they always include the female somewhere. They just try and hide her amongst the other symbolism. But they have to actually have her or the symbol would not mean anything. Now, as I was saying, we're seeing the actual male twin uh, soul, the divine male soul, and male souls in their physical crucifixion. Now, the reason that we see them symbolized in this way is that when the male souls experience crucifixion, they feel it in a more profound way than the female, and this is for a few reasons. Firstly, the male soul takes in information differently than the female. The male soul actually is the container of divine knowledge. He holds it within him. It's a knowing within him. It is already there and he brings this down with him when he is manifest in the physical realm and in the physical form. Now, the other thing about the male soul is that when he is manifest on the physical plane, he brings down with him his masculine attributes, just like female, the female brings down her feminine attributes. Now, we can look to the tarot cards to see these attributes and understand them better. And we can see in the Emperor and the Empress tarot cards that this is definitely symbolized with the male being a number four card. And we know that four is foundation and four is the square. And we see that we have the throne that looks like the square and it's got the ram's heads on it. It's actually made of stone. So it's showing that this is very much a foundational attribute that the male soul brings down with him. He also brings down his uh, connection to his instincts, you know, his animalistic nature. When we look at the female, we see that she has her scepter and she's holding it high as a connection to the ethereal. And we also see that she has a heart depicted here. And so she is much more intuitive and she's much more connected to the ethereal still. While the male is very connected and very foundational with his physical attributes. And so because of that, and because the female is already half in the ethereal, or very much in the ethereal, it is not very hard for her to transition through during this process of the physical crucifixion. However, for the male, because he is uh, at the very heart of his physical state, his physical form, foundational, he experiences this in a much more profound way and this is why they depicted this. So he's basically having to remove all of his uh, physical attributes now to understand who he is and that is an ethereal soul. And so this is a lot harder for the males to actually do. And this is, as I said, because they are more connected to the foundational and to move up through their ethereal body, they have to trust that they can let go of that foundation. And this is what the meaning of moving into the heart is talking about because it takes trust to remove that foundational uh, physical attribute that you have encompassed all your life as a male soul. So 
that pretty much is why we always see Jesus Christ on the cross because this is a, a huge um, experience and event and process for the male as opposed to the female who does move through this a lot easier because as I said she's already very connected to the ethereal, she's very connected to her instincts, she's very connected to her heart and so she doesn't really always require the foundation that the male does. Now on the back of the coin we see the crucifixion happening but now in the ethereal form because whenever we see a serpent that is actually symbolizing our ethereal form, our soul basically. And um, we can even see that the chakras are symbolized along this serpent and they've left off the bottom two chakras. Now if you've watched my previous videos you will know that I mentioned quite a lot that the older etchings, the older alchemy drawings and hermetic drawings often leave the two bottom chakras off and this is because these chakras are foundational, they're different in their energy. They are our connection to Mother Earth and the Moon. Now imagine that the root chakra is basically your connection to the energetic um, Mother Earth, energetic part of Mother Earth. This is how we lock down onto her with the root chakra in our energetic body. Now the sacrum chakra is representing not only the reproductive um, but also the sexual attraction and uh, emotions to a certain point but because it's connected to the moon it's connected to uh, reproduction because that is how we are birthed onto the physical plane through the moon and through the navel chakra and once again though because these aren't connected to our energetic body because these are more our, our foundational energy points they're not always depicted in the older alchemy drawings. What they did focus on in these drawings was the actual ethereal body and that is from the navel chakra to the heart, the throat, the third eye and the crown. Now it's not that the foundational chakras of the root and the sacrum aren't important, it's just that our ethereal soul always remains the navel, the heart, the throat, the third eye and the crown. I mean that's how we are when we're in the ethereal state and this is also when we're in the physical state. So this is who we really are. And this is what we need to really start understanding because we have to know that perception is our reality. So if we cannot perceive our true form, we cannot experience ourselves in truth. This is why they hid this information and this is why I'm continually finding it everywhere because it is in everything because this is the truth of who we are and they've tried very, very hard to hide this from us. And so if we only think that we are beings of limit and lack and we are finite then we can't actually understand ourselves in any other way. So it's important that we do start realizing the truth and we do start understanding and letting go of who we think we are and start moving into who we are. You know this is why it is about moving into the heart because your heart is half in the physical and it's half in the ethereal. So you need to move into that ethereal part of your heart and that is basically understanding who you are. You need to do this implicitly. You need to do this so that there is no doubt in your mind because there is no doubt in my mind. I know exactly who I am. And so until we all start understanding exactly who we are, we're going to be trapped in bondage to the physical plane exactly where they want us. And this is why they throw the circuses and all the distraction at us to keep us from understanding the truth. And that is that the physical is no longer serving us and we need to now let it go because everything that we know is about to change. And so we need to move back into our true form. And even if at the moment that is only done consciously and mentally, we need to still start understanding that we are more than just physical beings. Now we can see some more numbers encoded into the back here as well. So we see that the serpent's on the cross 
we've got the female on the right, and then we have three figures on the left. So the three figures on the left are symbolizing the Trinity. And then if we include the female, we have four figures on the bottom. And so we also have the four that symbolizes foundation. And we also know that the four can turn into an eight because the four also symbolizes the square. And the square, we include the sides and the points. So we get an eight. But we also see an eight within the information of the coin because we see that we've got four mountains, one, two, three, four, clearly on display with four figures. And these are the most significant symbols within the sphere. So these are the ones that we pay attention to. And so we get an eight. So now we have our first eight. Now, if we look at these mountains, we see on each mountain we have a cross. And if we take each side of the cross, we have four and four, which is eight. So we have an eight on the female side now, and we now have an eight on the male side. So now we have our triple eight, and we know that eight not only is symbolic for the infinite God energy, but also for the immortal male and female soul. Now, the other interesting uh, thing that we can find is that one of these mountains is a bit obscured. And so if we count that in, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Now, five is symbolic of our destiny, our contract with God, our mission. So did we fulfill our mission? Did we fulfill our destiny? And will we be Christed once again and rewarded with immortality? And we basically need to understand that our energetic system is also basically showing us how to be in alignment because when we are in alignment, our doorway opens, which is our third eye chakra, our pineal gland. This is also known as the door when you look at the Kabbalah tree of life. And so when we're in alignment, the door opens and we reach Christ consciousness. Once again, we are reconnected. We are divine. And when we are crowned, then we move forward into Zep Tepi. And this is why they all pretend to be kings and queens and all they're doing is emanating what really used to be and that is when people were truly crowned for being who they were for the essence of their soul they weren't crowned because they just happened to take control by slaughtering everybody and murdering everybody so all of those kings and queens that we now have sitting up in these palaces are nothing but frauds so there you go guys that is the ancient coin and uh, if anyone can give me any information on this coin, it would be fantastic because I would like to know a little bit about it, whether it's Greek or, or Roman. But anyway, some very interesting information to be found within all of this ancient symbolism. Once you know what you're actually looking for, it's not hard to find it. Well, I'll leave it there, guys. And as always, peace out.